What's up guys, Jolt here from the Token Minorities and I have a, uh, I guess a single narration today. Um, this is our monotype tournament semifinal for the B bracket between ground and ice. Um, my team is the ice team and my opponent was Flash with the uh, mono ground team. Unfortunately he was not able to join me for this narration today so I'll be doing this one solo. Um, so as far as this match is concerned, I know this is going to be a much more high-level match, I guess, than what we've seen in our other matches. Um, I know Flash is a very experienced battler, and I consider myself experienced as well. So I knew I'm going to have to take this one very seriously. I'm going to have to have a clear strategy as to how I'm going to approach this match. So with that in mind, I'm going to give a bit of a team preview um, before starting the narration of this actual match. So, um, looking at his team, I know that he does have Hippowdon, and I know I have Abomasnow. So I know that there's going to be a potential weather war, which very likely could contribute to who wins this battle. Um, so with that in mind, I know I have to keep Abomasnow alive, I cannot let it die. Otherwise, I'm going to just get thrashed by everything on his team that loves being in the sand. Um, also looking at his team, I know that Mamoswine can be a huge threat because any form of superpower or earthquake is going to deal a lot of damage to my team. Um, and I do know that his team, or his Mamoswine rather, is a life orb version, so I have to be very careful about that because it, I know it can use superpower. And quite frankly, the superpower wrecks my entire team. So my strategy here is knowing that he will either lead Mamoswine or Hippowdon. I'm going to lead Rotom, Wa or Rotom Ice, rather. I'm so used to using Rotom Wash in Gen 6. Um, so I'm leading my Scarfed Rotom, uh, Rotom Ice. And what I'm going to be doing with that is I'm going to throw out a Will-O-Wisp. Now, I know a lot of people say that a Scarfed Will-O-Wisp is not the best idea. However, on this team, it's almost necessary. I've found it useful in almost every single Monotype match I've uh, completed with this Ice team. So without further ado, let's go ahead and begin this battle. Alright, so he leads off with his Mammoth Swine, which is one of the two I expected. Luckily, it's the one I hoped he had led lead with or he would leave with rather. So what happens here is I do go for that Will-O-Wisp knowing that I have to Wisp it in order to prevent my whole team basically from being swept by a Life Orb boosted superpower. So knowing that my Rotom Ice was uh, capable of surviving that superpower tells me that my Cloister will be able to live it later on. Now this is a key point because I know that if I can get a Shell Smash up with my Cloister, I can sweep his entire team as long as Mammoth Swine is low enough in health. So that is the goal here. That's what I'm going for um, at the end of this match. Now my Rotom does faint here and that's totally fine. I got the Wisp up on the Mammoth Swine. He did not set up his Stealth Rocks, which is key as well. That'll make things much easier. So I go into uh, my Weavile here and I know that he'll probably want to switch. Um, and he goes into a Gastrodon, which is okay. Um, I do go for a low kick anyway to be safe because that Mammoth Swine is, exhibit, or is the biggest threat against my team. So I would love to take that thing down as soon as possible. However, I do get a good chunk of damage on that Gastrodon, and that's totally fine with me. Um, so I go ahead and switch into my Choice Banded Kirin Black, which is so powerful, guys. If you haven't tried it before, you need to. I don't understand why it was OU in Gen 5. I know it has kind of a limited move pool, but it's still so powerful. And it's still barely OU, I guess, in Gen 6. It's unbelievable. I don't even understand it. Um, it even has access to Iron Head, which destroys fairies in Gen 6, so I have no idea why. Anyway, the uh, Choice Banded Outrage easily one-shots the Gastrodon, so that was nice. Um, and I know I can take anything the Garchomp wants to do to me, um, barring maybe a Life Orb Outrage. Uh, it turns out he does not have Outrage on this thing. However, it is Life Orb, so that definitely would have killed me with, a, with the uh, Life Orb boost, boosted Outrage. Um, but anyway, I go ahead and continue to use my own Outrage, and that will take out the Garchomp, so that is... A very nice thing to have out of the way. Um, I do die to the rough skin, which is, eh, it's okay. Um, Kieran Black definitely served his purpose. I wanted to get rid of Gastrodon as well, as that could hinder a Cloister Sweep. Um, here he brings back in his Mammoth Swine, and I predicted that, knowing that he wants to get up his rocks. This was a perfect prediction on my part, because now he's going to go for the superpower, because he's terrified of Shell Smash, and he's going to do whatever he can to try to get rid of Cloister before I set that up. But the thing is, I got it set up. So that was very convenient, um, and I do get up the Shell Smash, and uh, so basically now it's just a matter of me not missing any Rock Blasts and me not making not making any stupid plays. Um, I can tear through over half of this team with no difficulty now, um, as this whole team is weak basically to a Cloister. So I go ahead and go for the Icicle Spear. I didn't want to risk the uh, Rock Blast missing. I know it does have Thick Fat, um, so it's not super effective, but then again, it is stab boosted, so I wasn't too concerned. Um, he goes into his Lander's T here, which is the smart play. He's trying to lower my attack stat with that Intimidate. 
um, and he's going to keep cycling through that, cycling through that, um, to try to get me as weak as possible um, before I destroy his entire team. Um, so he goes into his Needle King here as Death Fodder. Uh, it can't take an Icicle Spear. Um, so that's nice. But he decides to go ahead and go into his Apaldon here. I guess he didn't want to try to get another uh, reduction in attack from the Intimidate. Um, he must, he had a lot of confidence in his Apaldon. And it turns out that he, he had that confidence for the right reason. It actually was able to survive 5 hit Icicle Spear from a plus 1 Cloister. That is really, really impressive. He called it after uh, surviving that, that uh, Paladon's the ultimate wall, and I totally agree. <laughs> that was really impressive. But um, I get some pretty lucky here, actually. He uh, whirlwinds me, or roars me, I don't remember which one, into my Abomas Snow, which sets up the hail and consequently takes out the Paladon. So that was definitely nice. Um, here he goes back into his Landris T, and I'm pretty confident that this is a choice scarved version just because of how he keeps bringing it in. Um, and, yeah, that's Abomasno is not going to live that anytime soon. So, Abomasno does go down, but that's fine, because it's a Paladon is down, therefore I do get to have the weather permanently as hail, unless he has something running Sandstorm, which would be really weird. Um, but here I go ahead and just go for the Ice Shard, and that will take out the Landers, I believe. And if it does live, then I have like something else with the uh, Ice Shard as well. So it's no big deal. Uh, it turns out that was his last Pokemon, rather. So um, that was a very fun match with our buddy Flash, and I hope we can get him on here to do some more matches in the near future. I actually battled him with one of my uh, regular OU teams, or I guess a randomized OU team, but um, yeah, he, he killed me. <laughs> so he's a really good battler, definitely, and we hope we can do more with him in the future. So, yep, that about wraps this up, and we will see you all in the finals as my Ice Team will take on Lazardon's terrifying normal team. <laughs> see you then.